All right, everybody. It is uh, it is Monday. It was a wild, wild weekend. Let's get this thing started, huh? We've got a lot of new people around these days. They're watching the show. A lot of new subscribers. Let's do this. Three, two, one. Yo! I don't know why. A little extra pep in my step today. It's o- it's almost like uh, what they did, what th- what happened yesterday was warranted. So, we, we got a lot to talk about. We do still have to break down uh, Arkansas-Mississippi State. I know that that's... Uh, I know it it's, uh, sucks to talk about, but we do need to kind of break it down just a little bit. Also, Enos out. We know that much. You guys are uh, up to snuff on that. You know that, that Enos, that's kind of old news at this point. Uh, we uh, It was absolutely lit this weekend, man. It was absolutely crazy. The postgame show... You guys rocked it yesterday. I mean, we are just blowing up on the channel. A lot of you guys are, uh, we again, a lot of new subscribers. I don't know how many this weekend, but uh, we're it's just just exploding, and it's great. Hello there. Hello there. I know what you're doing, Austin. Hey, what's up, Ty? Glad, uh, glad old Danny is out of here. This is uh, Carson. Whew. Man. Also, when we are done here, and I'm probably going to repeat this a couple of times, when we're done here, we're going to have Stephen Hamner from QB Spotlight. He is going to give us his take. I'm pretty excited about this because I haven't actually heard from him. I don't know what his take's going to be. We're going to have him on for the Patreon member-only chat. So remember, you've got to be a Patreon supporter to get in on some of those uh, conversations. We've also got a brand new page up. I just posted it. It's the uh, new OC. Who's who's the new OC? We know for sure it's going to happen. Uh, obviously, it already has. Uh, but assuming Sam keeps his job, assuming they find a way, you know, um, who's going to be the guy? So we've got that that that's up just for Patreon supporters in Discord. So again. There's the uh, there's the link if you want to become a Patreon supporter if you want to listen to what QB what uh, QB Spotlight the QB Spotlight has to say my boy Stephen Hamner uh, General Kenobi that's right let's just talk about defense no need to discuss the train wreck of an offensive performance yeah yeah it's it's pretty rough pretty rough man hundred and whatever doesn't even matter it offense is so bad it doesn't even matter like we could say a hundred and well they're they're 114 no 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 no. it doesn't matter they're so bad that it's not worth even talking about where they're ranked um so was he a scapegoat is dan enos a scapegoat uh, uh, termination does it go beyond Dan Enos? Did Sam Pittman feel the heat from uh, from Hunter Yurchek? Did someone from the BOT give him a phone call? Like, hey, bro, no, we ain't having this. I don't know if that's how that dynamic works. I doubt it. I bet they only see him at, like, special events, you know? I don't know. Uh, I will not become a Patreon man. Whatever, Brian, you're already a Patreon supporter. Don't you try that. You're already a YouTube member. Or a <laughs> I see what you're doing, Brian. You guys out here acting a fool. Who you gonna get? That's right. It's a who you gonna get OC special. So that is available in Patreon. Those conversations are always a lot of fun. They always are. Always are. Oh, boy. Is everybody else sucking at fantasy football? God. I don't, I don't even want to talk about it. I don't, I'm, I don't even want to talk about it. I might go 0 for 3 again. I've done that once this year. I've gone 0 for 3 in all my leagues. Two of them are paid, and then we have the Tusk Talk League, and I that team is oh, they are so bad. If that team, if you're in that Tusk Talk League, I think we've got like 16 teams, I think. If that team beats you or is competitive with you, you got a problem. I am the Arkansas Razorbacks of the Tusk Talk Fantasy League, and in all leagues, apparently. I am having a horrible year. A lot of arguing going on uh, on the on the on the channel. A lot of arguing between myself to a degree and and uh, people in the comment section. The last video that I did, which was the stream yesterday with Dan Enos, well, you know the the aftermath of of uh, of, of his firing, so to speak. 
Uh, a lot of people kind of, you know, not real thrilled, I guess, with some of the things that I said. I, I, I questioned. It wasn't a matter of is is Kenny Guyton the guy? Because the more I think about it, the more it just doesn't matter. Like I, I, I don't think that it matters between him or, or Jimmy Smith. I don't care if if uh, vintage John Gruden stepped through that through those doors. Bobby Petrino, 2011. They got a lot of problems on the offensive side of the ball. I do to a degree. I listen. It had to happen. Enos was it? He wasn't it. He wasn't it. So I do think it was the right move. You had you had to do something, and that was the right move. You can argue that Kennedy, maybe, you know, what the hell's going on up front? But what you did by removing Enos is you kind of removed. You feel like maybe the heart of the problem, or or if it's not the heart of the problem. It's I, I don't know. You took out a section of the brain. I, I don't know. I don't know. How, I don't know what to compare it to. You know, uh, you're swapping out the motor. Whatever, something had to be done. Make sure you guys check out the links provided for you down below. Shout out to the Odd Soul Craft Bar and Pizzeria located right here. Listen, I I don't know if anybody went this weekend. If you were in town, I hope you gave them a shot. Go go check them out, man. Some of you, uh, some of you are, have already told me you're coming into town for Purdue. Boy, oh boy, isn't that crazy? We're this excited for an exhibition game. It is Purdue. I get it. You know, top five team. I think they're number three, right? AP top three preseason, big big deal. I don't think it's it's not regular season Purdue big deal type of thing, but it's a big deal. It's a big deal. So if you're in town, drop by the Odd Soul Crap Bar Pizzeria located on. Emma Street in Springdale. Great pies, man. I've got there's pictures in our Discord. If you scroll down to the sponsor page on the left hand side, you can check out their menu there. They've got a link. Everything you need right there. Odd Soul Craft Bar and Pizzeria. Also, shout out to Direct Service Overhead, the garage door company. If you need uh, repairs, replacement, they've got you covered. Affordable outcomes, hundred to five star reviews, better than best results. 501-244-3667. Their link is also down below. We have our Arkansas-Purdue prediction up on Discord, by the way. Yeah, we know it's an ex exhibition. We get it. But still, I mean, we got to have something. And, and uh, there's, some, there's some positivity in, in your lives if you're Razorback fans and the basketball team is, is that light at the end of the tunnel, it feels like. And when it's not them, it's baseball. Although they didn't really do what we thought they were going to do last year. But we've already got that one up and rolling. And we've already got a handful of picks. So, again, if you're in our Discord, make sure you go do that. Yeah, the goal is I had a number of people ask, like, hey, what time are the streams? This is going to take some getting used to for a lot of the regulars. I get it. You know, I'm not – my goal is to not stream during the day. I'm going to try and stream later. But there also may be days where I'm going to stream during the day. All I can say is make sure you hit the notification bell. You've got to be subscribed. Hopefully – YouTube will send you that notification. Uh, can confirm I defeat Ty Handley in fantasy. That team is terrible, dude. Like I, I want to be real. I did not do. I did. I did that like six hours before my before the draft, my first draft, which was not Tusk Talk. It was another league I'm in. I did like a little bit of research, not a whole lot, and I basically tried to implement that in all three of my drafts in all three teams. That that approach is has failed. It's not a good approach. Do your off season. Do do your due diligence. If you play fantasy, I'm going to tell you something else. Since points per reception became the new standard in fantasy football, I, I I'm garbage. I'm garbage. I used to be pretty competitive before PPR. Not anymore. Sounded like from Pittman PC uh, press conference today, the players never bought into Enos or was very uh, was very little. Or was very little they trusted him. Yeah, I have clips. We're going to play them. They're not long. I didn't take the whole thing because I'm going to be honest with you. I probably could have played that whole bit. I mean, some people think it was all coach speak. I thought it was just him being pretty honest, if I'm being real. Um, <laughs> let me turn these yahoos on the radio off. <laughs> oh, I, I think I know who you're talking about, Joe. <laughs> Uh, hit the like, people. What's up, NA Beer Talk? I know it's a little bit brutal, and, and this season has not gone according to plan, but 
the hype behind basketball is real, and it's not just because of the thing of things how things have turned out for football. It's not just that. It's the basketball team's going to be really good. It's going to be really good. Uh, so, but unfortunately, we're in the situation that we're in, and here's Pittman talking just a little bit. Make sure I've got all my volumes here. Why do you think it didn't work? I mean, you talked about volume here just now, but what do you, what else played into it just not being a fit? I think a lot of coaching has to do with enthusiasm, spirit, uh, wanting to run through a wall for different people. And I just – we just really never had that on, on the offensive side of the ball. If you look at it defensively, um, you know, there's a lot of that there. Um, I think you can get guys to play better than maybe even what their talents are. Uh, if they believe in you. And, and to be honest with you, until uh, this season, that has been, a, uh, I think, a positive about me uh, that, you know, guys seem to want to play and, and those things of that nature. And, and uh, they've got it going on defense, so I know it's possible to do. Uh, we have a lot of similar players that we've had in the past. Uh, it just never clicked. And it really never did. And uh, uh, so this is not a move to uh, – for any other reason than it just wasn't working. And it's not a move to, to can the season. We've got a really good defense. If our offense can go out and function and function well, we still have games that we can win and we need to. And uh, – so uh, I don't I can't really put a finger on it except um uh, there was it was just rough um our kids weren't as motivated and that can go on me as well our kids weren't as motivated to play as as what I have seen in the past and I mean, you could tell the way we took the field on Saturday that it was like you know, and I can be, remember being on the headset going, "Are we? what are we doing? I mean, it's almost like a bum, 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 as we're going out there. And we were in the game the entire game. It just didn't feel like it. And uh, so, and I'll give Mississippi, Mississippi State had a great game plan and all that, but we didn't adjust. And uh, so I don't, I, that would be the only thing. We've lost our – Spirit, and there's a lot to be said about that. Okay, uh, there it was. That wasn't everything. There was a lot of. There's honestly some good stuff in there. He kind of talks about, uh, and I've got the whole transcript right here. Uh, shout out to Dudley Dawson for getting that to me. Uh, but there, there was a lot that he talked about moving the pocket. Right? Okay. Now this is something. How often have have I – I've sat here and said that it needs to happen. They need to move the pocket more. Sam talked about it, it seems like, every week. Wow, we're going to move the pocket more. It never happened. They practiced it. He admitted as much. Yeah, we practiced it. We just didn't do it. And then when asked, he puts his hands up. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I, I don't know. I've always – I've been of the belief that Sam has had some say. I mean, of course, all coaches have vetoing power. Of course they do. They are the executive branch after all, right? I mean, they are uh, beholden to nobody but the but the AD, right? So, of course, he has vetoing power. But I've always kind of thought he's had a little, a little bit more of a hand in what's going on with the offense, maybe even on both sides of the ball. I don't know. Um, but what he said there about not knowing why they didn't do it more often – um, he also kind of talked about the lack of energy and all this stuff. He was just things that he was witnessing. It does. I don't know if that's him putting it on Enos. I mean, he was very, very complimentary of Dan Enos, by the way. I think he's mentioned three or four times, oh, his offense is good and this and that. And, and um, you know, I, you know, it's what he said when he hired him. But it seems to me like this was something that, that Enos just wasn't comfortable with doing with this offense. If Enos is the guy making that call, if Enos is the one, if Enos, if Sam is saying, listen, we practiced it, but we didn't do it, don't ask me why we didn't do it, that's either him admitting maybe I just 
maybe we just didn't want to do it in the game and I just was kind of forgot about it. Or Dan Enos was the decision maker with the offense and he chose not to move the pocket. And then, of course, the follow-up question, I think, and I know the media had a lot of other stuff to ask, kind of makes you wonder. So the follow-up question maybe would be, okay, so Dan Enos just didn't, he just didn't do it. He just didn't call. He didn't make those calls during the game, something to that effect. Uh, Sam answered in very long, I mean, like this is one of the longest transcripts I've ever seen. I was trying to keep up with it in Patreon, as I always do. I try to type out, you know, it's not going to be verbatim. Um, I try my best to keep up with it so much. He kind of, he kind of bounces a little bit. And one of the questions that he was asked was about the offense. If I could pull it up here. Um, I, I, I don't know what to tell you guys. When he was asked about the uh, about the offense, okay, this is what he was asked: Will there be a mesh of current system plus Bryles since Kenny knows both? Remember, Kenny Bryles. We're going to go over that here in just a second. Kenny has obviously he has history, but not just here, not just at Arkansas. This was Sam's response: Yeah, I don't think we're going to see anything that we haven't done this year more. I think we may do more I think we may do more of some things that we've done a few times and then you could see a faster pace. I mean, we've heard that before though, but okay, that was Enos. Uh and then you could see a faster pace and some things of that nature, but our but our volume, which you mentioned multiple times by the way, talking about the volume which is the 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 I guess the thickness of the playbook, I guess. Uh, but our volume is what we're cutting down so that we can do something really well. And if you look at, if you look in the past, we've been able to run the football from from running these types of plays. We have them in our offense. We've just got to we've just got to we've we've just got to go to practice. So there's no there's they're not practicing this week. I don't know if he sent them. I don't know what they're doing this week. I know I was. I looked at media availability this week sent from the Arkansas SID to the me- to the media and there's no um there's no practice this week for the media so I'm assuming they're just going to take the week off. Listen, that's what you're supposed to do during the bye week, you know, and and that doesn't mean they're taking the week off. I should reframe that. They're probably just not going to do anything real physical. So there's nothing for the media to really see if they do anything at all. I really don't know. I've only had I've only been doing this thing where I go to practice now. This is my second year. So I really don't know what he does there in the bye week with his players. So they're going to they're going to, you know, lick some wounds, try to get better, and then obviously they're going to be in the they're going to be in the film room trying to get things figured out. Now, he's going to have a hand in the offense. He said as much in this very in this very uh, you know, sit down with the media today. I mean, he he said I'm going to be more involved. Uh, I'm going to be more involved. The defense is fine without me. I'm going to I'm going to go be more part of the offense. Now, you know, it sounds like he's going to be involved maybe with the setup of the offense. Um, it sounds like they're going to go to a scripted, more of a scripted format, which I think a lot of OCs do that. A lot of coordinators, a lot of offenses do that. They kind of script out their first couple of drives. So maybe that's kind of what he meant. Um, again, this is one of the, this is one of the longest um, transcripts I've ever seen. I mean, all of his responses are very long winded, so I don't want to go over all of these. I'm sure I'm going to forget some stuff. Um, rocket update. We, so this is what Sam says about rocket Sanders. He never left the fold rocket is getting rehab in Dallas and he'll be back whenever he's healthy. I don't know when that is. Um, I don't know. Again, not a medicine. I'm not. A, I'm not a sports medicine guy. I don't. I don't know. I know he had fluid build up on his knee. That is something you got to take pretty serious. I've been told, and and so I'm of the belief he's he's done for the year. I, I don't know that we're going to see Rocket back, but nonetheless, he's going to be asked about Rocket every week. I, I, I would be surprised. I'll say this: I don't know anything about what's going on with Rocket, but I would be surprised at this point if he suits back up now. There could be a relationship between him and Kenny Guy, and he could actually be pretty impressed about what's going on here. Maybe some of some of you have alluded to, well, maybe Enos was the problem. Rocket didn't want to play for him. I don't know that that that's necessarily the case. It could be. I don't know Rocket well enough, and I, I don't speak to anybody in his circle. Um, 
I've not talked to any other media members about that situation, but it could be. I mean, I don't rule anything out. You can't blame a guy. <laughs> I mean, you can't, but at the same time, I get it. Some people have that mentality, and I think it's a good mentality that, you know what? You wear the Arkansas on your chest. You know, you committed, you signed. If you're able to play, you should play, and I completely – you guys, some of you know how I feel about opting out. I'm not a fan of it. I think it's – it. It's it's a slow death of the sport when you've got players that are just like, yeah, I'm done. I'm I'm gonna wait till the real checks roll around for the NFL. And I'm not again. I'm not I'm not assuming that's what's happening here with Rocket. I certainly hope it's not. Um, how will you try best to simulate Guyton calling plays before Florida? Sam says we're gonna have walkthroughs, which is gonna give him opportunities to set a script. So there's the script talk. They're in they're they're in there right now. They're going to have a report for me here when we get back about everything that we uh, that we talked about this morning. Then they're going to head they're going to head over their Florida game plan with myself in there. He'll have an opportunity to call plays Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday this week. Okay, so yeah, that's the part I couldn't I didn't hear him respond to. Okay, good. Well, there you go. So it sounds like he's going to let him get comfortable. I mean, my gosh, you scroll down forever. They're they're all they're, a lot of his responses towards the end. They got a little shorter. Uh, is Kenny taking over for Dan's role as quarterback coach? Yes, yes. You know he played quarterback at Ohio State. I'm not going to read this whole thing, but uh, yeah. So we that, there you go. Short short answers. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna take over. And then someone asked the follow up: uh, Is Kenny the quarterback coach as well? Yes, he is. Uh huh. That's what he says. That's. Um, he, he goes on about Kenny playing at Ohio state. All right. Oh, we got a super chat correction. Enos has been fired three or four, three or four of OC jobs. There's Tim boy. He... <laughs> oh, I didn't read your first super chat. Hang on. This is a great move. Enos has been forced, uh, three out of four of his OC spots moving forward. will be double, double our game per average of offensive pr- productivity. KJ will be fire. God, I love your enthusiasm, Tim. I really do because it rubs off on me, man. It really does. It 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 makes me like I I'm hopeful. My concern is personnel. It is my concern. I, you know, I'm worried about the offensive line. It almost it just it seems like it doesn't matter. But how much of that was Enos? Like that's the thing that we don't know just yet. You know, maybe he was the core problem to all of it. Maybe that is what's going on. Maybe that's what's going on, man. He was the core problem to all of it. And the, all of it maybe isn't perfect, but it works a little bit better, right? Uh, Drink has Mizzou looking like Bama. What are you smoking? Who who are you talking to? Oh, okay. I see. We've got an argument here. I mean, I you lose credibility when you mention bringing in Drinkwitz. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to I'm not going to entertain that right now. I don't know what y'all are doing talking about Drinkwitz. A uh, tie, I let's see. I do not believe this is from Jeremy Gray. I do not believe your check will be able to successfully sell just an OC change to the public to get people excited to buy tickets next year, especially when more losses pile up to finish the year or finish finish the year. Boy, oh boy, we're we're in all too familiar waters right now when we're talking about coaching changes. I mean, we've been here so many times, you know. I mean, and, and it is it is a part of college football. I get it; it's part of all sports. Period. But I just feel like with hog fans, we're here too much. We're here too often, and not for the right reasons, you know. And it's it it sucks. Like it's it's at a it's at a point where it does feel hopeless and I've been listening to sports talk radio. Oh my gosh. Um, people calling each other morons on the radio. Uh, I mean, you know, uh, fan is short for fanatic. You got people that are telling you that Arkansas will never be worth a shit. You should just move on. Just, just don't be a one sports fan. And I, and I don't like that narrative either that, 
well, I guess it's not really a narrative, but I, I don't like people telling you that you should you should you should have to be a fan of one thing or another. You should have to be if you're a Razorback football fan, then you should have to be a basketball and baseball fan. I would recommend it because football is breaks your heart, man. Scott Swindle with the who you gonna get? Don't forget after this, we're gonna have a Patreon live chat. With the one and only Stephen Hamner from QB Spotlight. That's a Patreon only chat. If you haven't already, go join up. Right there it is. There's a link for you. I think I, this is this is the point that that they are making this morning on the radio. This is from Ty Richardson, and um, I like Ty, and and he and I text every once in a while, and he was. I was telling him, I I gave him my sympathies this morning. I said, bro, I'm feeling for you. Um, But he made a comment about, you know, if you think about how things have gone down, you know, at Arkansas, it's going to be really hard. You know, it's not like you've got these big name OCs that want to come be an OC here after what we've seen in recent years, you know, with the firing or the hiring and firing of guys like Brett Bielema, Chad Morris, you know, now you've got the situation with, with Sam Pittman where it looks like a sinking ship. It's going to be really hard. And I'm going to tell you something right now. I, I do. I agree with that. It's not an easy sell. It's it's not an easy sell right now. That's what Houston Nutt's job was, right? When he came in, I, I, I don't know. I've had some old G Hog fans tell me they thought he was going to be three and done. He was going to get fired after three years. What Houston Nutt managed to do was build a foundation in which you could hire someone like a Bobby Petrino. Now, I know Petrino won it out at, at Atlanta. I get it. You know, the circumstances, the the temperature, the moon, the stars, everything aligned. I get it. But I don't think Petrino would have, would have settled for a shit job. I think Arkansas was at least a decent job. And that's what we wanted Sam Pittman to do is to correct the ship, lay a foundation, make it attractive again, you know, and unfortunately, it, it it's looking like you're on the Titanic right now. And they struck the iceberg. I think they struck the iceberg last year. They they underperformed. I mean, there's no doubt the defense was shit. You know, it was it was really bad. Special teams was was not great. I think they kind of struck the iceberg then, and it's been a very slow sinking since then. Liberty did it for me. I've said it before. That game should that should never have happened the way that it did. I don't care who was coaching them. I don't care about you know how good or bad Liberty was. Or you know, I don't care about that. That team had no business walking in on a pretty good football team on a, on a pretty good Razorback team and, and, and beating you in your home in front of your home crowd for Sam Pittman. Now I know that's happened before. When I mention this, someone says, "Yeah, well, Ty Colorado State happened." Right, I mean, it's not like we haven't lost to some – hell, you can go f- further back than that, all the way to the Citadel in 92, which resulted in Jack Crow's termination. But under Sam, I thought those days were behind us. You know, you started off the year beating Cincinnati and South Carolina, only to – again, I, I that, that's, that game against Liberty was it for me. Like, I, that was what I saw. That was a major red flag. KJ shouldn't have played. Okay, then why wasn't the backup – why weren't they? Why didn't they feel well enough that you know what we could put a backup quarterback in there and be fine? You're three years into this, not two, not one. You're three years in, and you don't have a confident backup quarterback. You were willing to risk KJ Jefferson, and then what happened? Then you lose him. You lose him. You don't have him for the next game, and you lose these close games. I just, to me. It's it's a lot, you know, it's, it's a lot to think about and to try and try and understand it all. And then think like, okay, those days are clearly not behind us. And Liberty showed us that. And you fast forward to this year and you're still losing. And I think BYU is, is once again, a little bit better than I thought they were, but you you say you had no business losing that game. You had no business losing to Mississippi state. You have no business being on this losing streak, and who's the head coach? I don't know if Sam. I don't know what the what the threshold is for him. I don't know if it's if it's four games. He's got to win four. It's he's got to win five. He's got to get us to a bowl game. I don't know if that's what it is. I have no idea what Hunter Yurchek is thinking. But here's what has to happen. 
and this is going to sound a little crazy, but this is only because I'm not sold that they can go out and get a great OC in the offseason. I don't think they can go out and get a Dan Mullins. Maybe I'm wrong, man. Maybe they can go out and grab someone, a big-time OC. Maybe I'm wrong. Kenny Guyton has got to work out. I feel like not to keep him. I'm saying Kenny Guyton has got to turn this thing around well enough that a new offensive coordinator will look at this and go, oh, okay, no, it was just Dan Enos. It wasn't like Arkansas is lacking all this talent and they can't recruit and they can't go into the portal and grab some pretty good players. It's simply because Dan Enos was the problem. Dan Enos – you know, was the was the dead brain cell, okay? He's out. They were clearly this guy who's never been a coordinator before in his life was able to, to write the ship. Oh, okay. That w- I think that would help make the job a little bit more appealing. I'm not saying it's the answer, and also if you kind of feel like if, if he does write the ship, maybe Guyton should get control, right? Maybe Guyton should be the quarterback coach slash OC next year. If he's able to write this, now – what I said to some friends of mine on on um, Marco Polo was I, I'm I'm fearful that the problem that Dan Enos isn't the whole problem, and that's a big problem for Arkansas because then that means all these other deficiencies that they've had so far this year that it's why things went so poorly, right? Uh, that that it's or it's a big reason why things went so poorly. Again, I want to make it perfectly clear especially after some of the comments yesterday. Uh, I am for the – Dan Enos had to go. It was not a working fit. Or it, it, it didn't work out. Sam Pittman acknowledged as much. I do think to a degree he was a scapegoat, but it's it's a necessary scapegoat, and it's, scapegoat and it's the right thing to do. Um, and you don't want to – I mean, a man just lost his job. I don't know. I hope he goes on and, you know, finds success elsewhere. I, I, I don't ever wish the worst for people. I've never understood that, you know – some of the things that were said about Chad Morris after he left, I get it. People are mad that he's getting a paycheck from Arkansas for not coaching. But, man, I just – I don't ever wish ill upon anybody. It didn't work out here. Go live a happy life, okay? Just don't do it here. And I feel the same way for Dan Enos. But, again, my concern is the deficiencies are too overwhelming. Because if you've – and I've rewatched that game now, and I've watched um, – I keep forgetting the name of that channel, Power Hour or something. He broke down some issues, guys. It's, I mean, it's offensive linemen just getting overpowered. I mean, I, I am really concerned. It might be more than, and I think it is more than just a Dan Eno's problem. And Sam Pittman acknowledged it as well. He said, you know, we're not blocking. It's an offensive line issue, receiver issue, tight end issue. It's across the board. Um, and the reason why it's a good thing to get rid of to, to walk away from Eno's is because. Wrong motor, and, 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 and you've got a Honda Civic motor inside an SUV. It just wasn't the right fit. I'm working, I'm working so damn hard to get away from the square peg round hole analogy that I'm just making shit up as I go. So <laughs> I, I lean on the square peg round hole set, uh, talk. But I, I, so that is my concern, that no matter who you put at OC, it doesn't matter. They're, they've got so many issues, and that is a reflection of Sam Pittman. At the end of the day, and again, he is, he said it himself. You know, he kind of took a little bit of um, he he's he's kind of took some ownership of some things this weekend, and that is, that is the thing that worries you. And if that is the case, they may not win another game. Uh, and, and you're looking at two and ten. Sam Pittman should absolutely be fired. There is no there is no excuse. And a lot of you are going to say, "Hell, if he wins five, Ty, he should still be fired." I think he. I absolutely think he keeps his job at five. But uh, the further south from six you go, the less likely. And right now we're sitting at two. Uh, Ty, why do you think the O line just doesn't have the edge? Remember when Arkansas took A and M and Texas to the woodshed? <laughs> what was it two seasons ago? What happened to that line? That's a really good question. I, I can't explain it. I I really can't. Cody Kennedy is still here. I, I cannot explain why they've regressed so much. And I do think Kennedy probably gets it in the offseason too. Especially if especially if, if Enos doesn't bail them out. Or I'm sorry. Oh boy, I didn't mean to say that. Not Enos. If Kenny if Kenny Guyton doesn't bail them out. There is a theory, there's a working theory that Dan Enos' philosophy just it, it really was. It was the wrong cog in the wrong machine. I'm horrible at analogies. I really got to give that up. It, it, it was. It was. You asked for a flathead screwdriver. You didn't. You, you didn't get a flathead. You. Yeah, I'm working on it. I promise. 
you guys are pretty good at it. Some of you, I mean, you, you, you guys are good at some of these. I've seen them. You guys are really good at some of these analogies. Uh, one minute I want Sam gone. Then the next minute, the who you going to get crowd seems to have a point. Yeah. Yeah. No, they do. And I've said that before. I, it's fun to, it's fun to make fun. It's fun to who you going to get. That's a blast to do, but they have a point. There is a question about who the hell you're going to get. Cause it's, it is not an appealing job right now. And that's what I want. I, that's what you want Sam to do. And I wonder if Hunter Yurchek's approach is going to be something like, uh, you know, we got to give him another year. We got to see what he can do in year five. It can't possibly be any worse, right? That would probably be the thing that, that keeps him here. Um, is that they feel like grass isn't greener and you're going to settle for someone that might even be worse, you know, and, and there is truth to, there's a reason why you had to, and I hate to say it, but you had to settle for, and it was a little messy, but the Chad Morris thing, there's a reason it's not a super sexy job. Bielema didn't turn this job. He didn't leave it any better than he found it. Chad Morris left it in a dumpster fire and Sam Pittman was here to pick it up. And thank God that he did. It certainly seemed like Sam, for at least a year, maybe two, had at least made Arkansas somewhat respectable again. That nine-win season, I mean, come on, dude. That year was great. That year was great, man. You beat the hell out of Texas. You won your bowl game, the last Outback Bowl, beating Penn State, you know, a Big Ten opponent. And and it certainly seemed like, man, okay, maybe this is our new reality. Maybe eight wins is what we can expect every year. And you went six. You know, you won, you won eight regular season games, six, and now you're looking at maybe three or four. Uh, it's just not – it's not an upwards trajectory. Let's talk really quick. I know you guys got a lot of questions. And remember, if you really want me to read your, your question, Super Chat. I'm right now – I'm batting 1,000 um, on Super Chats as of today. Let's talk about Kenny Guyton really quick. Kenny Guyton is in his third season with the Razorbacks as the, uh, as the, as the wide receivers coach in his third year. Guyton started his coaching career as a graduate assistant at Houston from 2015-2016 uh, uh, under Herman. Guyton eventually became the Houston uh, Cougars wide receiver coach in 2017 under head coach Major Applewhite and offensive coordinator Kendall Bryles. Guyton rejoined Bryles and arrived in Fayetteville as the Arkansas wide receivers coach uh, down the road. His first season with Arkansas was good timing. He got to be a part of a nine-win team, including the Outback Bowl, the last Outback Bowl. Uh, I don't know why I like including that. It's just kind of cool. That's something you've got in your back pocket. Yeah, that's right. We won the last Outback Bowl. Uh, also coached future first-rounder Traylon Burks. Burks produced one of the greatest seasons ever by a uh, Razorback receiver catching 66 passes, second most in a single season by the Razorbacks for over 1,100 yards, third most in a single season, and 11, 11 touchdowns, second most in a single season. I believe Kobe Hamilton has that record. I know Kobe Hamilton has a couple. Uh, Burke set the school record for 100-yard games in a single season with six and ranked second all-time with 10. Last season, he brought... Hazelwood and Matt Landers to Fayetteville out of the transfer portal. Both of them had had some type of impact on the offense. Although Bryles, Veer, and Shoot, uh, in in the Bryles offense, Veer and Shoot passing the ball was not a major feature of that offense last year. Uh, neither of those two wideouts were drafted. So I I was a little hard on Guyton, and I I stand by it. I wasn't over. I'm not overly impressed with what he's done in the in the portal. You know, I mean, yeah, he got Hazelwood here. Of course, there's reasons for that. And, and Matt Landers was – who knew the cat would, would drop a four three seven forty in the combine and not get drafted at six four? what was he, 200 pounds. That's still surprising to me. Someone didn't roll the dice. But, um, I, you know, I stand by it. I haven't been blown away by his portal picks, okay? Um, it certainly helps when the year before you won nine games. That's a little bit better sell to these guys in the, in the portal. And then you go six and six. And I obviously this year, I don't think they did a very good job in the portal on the offensive side of the ball period. I mean, Braun at least starts, you know, on the offensive line. I know the other two do as well talking about, um, Oh my God, I'm brain farting here. Uh, Andrew Armstrong 
and uh, the other receiver. God, <laughs> my brain is in a hundred. I'm it's it's uh, everywhere, but where it should be. Uh, the 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 kid, the guy, the guy from uh, Michigan. What the hell's his name? Why am I Tesla? Good God. To slaw, that's his name. See, it's not when you're doing this live, you're gonna you're gonna make mistakes. I don't know that either of those guys have really been great. There's definitely a, a, an issue with separation. You know, they're not getting open. This is this has been pointed out by the guys covering the game, by analysts on YouTube. Like these receivers are not getting open. And that was kind of my my only real dig. Well, those two things. I don't think he's done a great job in the portal, and these receivers have not, they don't look like they've improved. Now, it's also not his fault, I don't believe, anyways, that Santana's not getting more looks. Um, you know, it's not my it's it's not his fault. His receivers have dropped some balls this year. Broden's dropped a couple. It's not all on him, but they're not uh, they're not creating separation. I I'm just very underwhelmed with about all the skill position players at Arkansas outside of the tight ends. Why? That's another thing about Enos, man. Why are you not targeting your tight ends more often? And Sam kind of alluded to that a little bit. When things at work and you're you're kind of what, what was the exact verbiage? What did he say? I'll have to find it later. But it seemed like he was leading to something that was working, and, and you don't do it again. I'm not going to look through all this. Um, <laughs> so much. This this um, this transcript is is a mile long. I won't find it. But he he alluded to something to that into to that nature. Um, if something's working and we've heard him talk about that before. And we've also heard him talk about moving the pocket. We've heard about him, you know, trying to find the issues and moving the offensive line around. It seems like they've tried everything in the book. I hope you guys, for those of you who believe it's all on Enos, I hope you're right. Because if it is, then maybe this team's got a shot at winning a couple of games to end the year out. Oh, we got another super chat five plus wins and Sam gets one more year. Oh, a hundred percent. Tim, I agree. Uh, I think Sam can fix it. Look at what he did with for the D. However, it better not be Buddy Hire as he suggested today. He did suggest that. You're right. He did. He talked about people that he knows, you know, and their availability. He does rely on that a little bit. They can run 22 miles an hour but can't get separation. That's coaching. Well, I mean, again, guys, do you remember Devion Warren? To some of you OGs, do you remember Devion Warren? That is one of the fa- – I've always heard he's probably one of the fastest Razorbacks to ever play. He, was, he wasn't He was that – he wasn't that great. You know, I mean, he, he, he struggled. I mean, he struggled to get on the field. I think he had a couple of productive years, somewhat productive, but he was known as a, as a speedster. Poole, what was that kid uh, out of Texas, Poole, P-O-O-L-E, was a Gatorade player of the, of, of the year in like Texas. And he was known as a speedster. Like that doesn't tell you everything just cause you're fast. Well, that's gotta be a reflection of, of coaching. Not necessarily. Sometimes it's, it's just, they're not good. They're just not good at whatever it is you're asking him to do. Uh, Bakke would have made a difference this year. Says Dan Tanner. Maybe, maybe I, uh, he, he looked pretty, he looked consistent. Um, he looked consistent in, in, uh, what was it? Spring camp. James Swopes is not winning with Enos playbook. Thanks for the super chat. Absolutely not. Dedrick pool. I was wanting to say Cedric pool, but yeah, you're right. Dedrick pool. You remember him? I think he was, if I remember right, he was a Gatorade player of the year in Texas or Florida, wherever the hell they got him out of. Uh, there's been a number of guys who are lightning quick. The speed's not everything, right? Your raw ability is not everything. Sometimes you're just not a good player just because you're fast. Um, give him another year, guys. Handled the pressure of the hot seat phenomenally. He says, Camo gang. I don't know if you're being funny or not, Camo. Are you trying to – is that a joke? Are you trying to crack a joke? I can't ever tell with you, man. Uh, 22 miles an hour speed is straight line speed, but, but can you plant your foot cut? Yeah, exactly. Redirect to create natural separation. Yeah. There's, there's so much more than just having speed. I mean, it's, it's, and some of it, I agree. A lot of it probably might be coaching, but if that's the case, who's coaching the receivers, that's all I'm saying. I, I, I like Guyton. He is young. He's hungry. I mentioned that in discord. I like, I like Guyton. I don't know if he's going to fix the issues, but at the same time, I don't know that anybody could. I, I don't know that, again, you could get vintage Bobby Petrino to come in towards the end of the season and ask him, hey, man, fix our offense. 
you know, and again, if, if you guys have watched the same stuff that I've watched, if you rewatch these games, if you, if you've, <laughs> I really tried to soak in as much as I could yesterday, as painful as it was last night, boy, they certainly seem like they've got some talent issues. And, and we said all season long, they've got the talent to fix it. I don't know that we were right on that. I don't know that I was right. I said all year, this team's got the talent. I think they could fix it. They could fix it. I also said there were red flags after the Kent State game. Uh, what are your plans for the Auburn game? Will you do Will you do a game companion? I'll be in town and may stop at odds. So, <sighs> I don't know. I doubt I'd do a game companion. I, I don't know. We are doing one for Purdue on Saturday, by the way. We're doing a game companion for Saturday. For Purdue. I'm excited for it. Shout out to Don't Read the Comments. I'll be on there. I'll be on there with them. Game companion on Saturday. For Purdue, remember, tip off is at 3 p.m. There's a lot more to say. I know I got into some really good, really good arguments yesterday with uh, with folks in the in the comment section. Um, Terser, Terser was one. I forgot what we were even talking about. I forgot what we were arguing about. But there's been some pretty good back and forth. Um, boy, I'd really like to. I really wanted to address what he said because I wanted to clarify. Hang on just a second. If it's worth, you know, maybe it's not. Get around. No, no, shush, shush, shush. There we go. Um, there were so many comments, you guys. This has got to be one of the most commented streams I've ever had. Not just live chat. I mean, afterwards. I mean, some OGs I've not heard from in a really long time. Uh, shout out to uh, Wayne Bell. I think he was, I think he was smoking some Cheech and Chong grass. I have no idea what the hell his comment was about. <laughs> James Whittington, who used to be in our Discord, that's old Krusty Hog. He's he stopped by. He had something to say. Shout out to all these people. Uh. I mean, they're still. I mean, it's crazy how loaded up this is. Oh, it was the Criswell argument. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know if I want to go back down that road or not, but um, asking about Criswell and him being, you know, whatever the situation is there. Again, I don't think it matters. It's it's almost like the same situation for the OC with what I've seen from the lack of separation from wideouts. Offensive line not blocking the way they should be, getting overpowered, guys on their ass so much up front. Maybe it is all on. Maybe it is all on on uh, Enos. I doubt it, but I don't think it matters, and I don't know that plugging Criswell in is going to change anything. To which, <laughs> I think this is Terser. It's TS four four two six. He ends, he and I go back and forth, but he says, cool, no reps to work on next year for Criswell, KJ's cheeks. That's not how it works, okay? I mean, unless you're getting completely blown out, if if you're in the game and the coaching staff feels like KJ gives you the best shot to win the game, they're going to play KJ. And how many times, TS4426 or Terser, whoever you are, how many times has Arkansas lost, but they were in the game, they were either leading – or whatever in the fourth quarter. You can argue that KJ's been bad, and I would agree, but Enos, I mean, KJ played his worst game of the year on Saturday. According to PFF, it was the worst. He was the worst offensive performer on the field. <laughs> I think no matter the side of the ball, it was bad. He did not have a good game. Even with a clean pocket, he didn't have a good game. But if you're in close, this staff, and I'm only telling you the reality of the situation, this staff feels like, KJ gives them the best shot at winning these games. So, I don't know. We'll ask Stephen Hamner what he thinks about it. Maybe maybe he feels like Criswell should get a shot. So, again, that's for Patreon supporters only. Oh, we got more Super Chats. Hang on. Boop, 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 boop. Uh, I'm, I'm still batting 1,000. Brian Fraser, the $5 Super Chat. I want to know what volume Sam was was talking about. Seem seemed like the same plays every week. Also, everyone can't honestly believe – it was just Enos. I agree, Brian. It, I, there's no way it was just Enos to be – I mean, it's possible, I guess, but I, I just don't see that being the case. I I think what they want to do – and what I got from what he said today, 
I guess they're going to use the same. They're going to use this playbook. You guys correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe I misheard. Maybe I misread. Maybe I'm interpreting what he said wrong. Sounds like they're going to use the same playbook, but they're just going to make it smaller, thinner. You know, they're going to. They're, maybe they're just going to use a handful of plays versus maybe Enos was overloading the offense. Maybe it was too technical and too overloaded. I don't know. Um, I I was a little bit discouraged to hear that. I was kind of hoping, and again, maybe I'm. He could. This could all be misdirection, anyways. You know, it could be. He could be just saying this on purpose. He doesn't want to get. He doesn't want to give Florida any advantages, even though you know you've got a bye week coming up. Even though you've got a couple of weeks, I'm going to tell you they take every every action they can to keep as much hidden as as humanly possible. Um, maybe that's what they were doing. Maybe this was. They're pulling a 180 here. I don't know. I was kind of hoping we would hear we're going to try, we're going to maybe mesh some of what we've done this year, just in only simplify it. But we're going to op- we're going to we're going to take a look at the Veer and shoot and see if we can install that now. We're going to give that a shot. We're going to run through it. We're going to watch a little bit of film. We're going to try and execute it in practice a couple, of, you know, a couple of days since we've got a bye week. We've got a little bit of a cushion, so maybe we could and that and that's why we made the decision that we made, guys. That's why we ultimately decided to walk away from Enos as soon as possible before the bye week. Uh, that way we can we can maybe see if we can we can implement a little bit of veer and shoot, considering the guy that we just made the OC, who he's worked with and what offense he's familiar with. This will be his first time ever calling plays, by the way. This is his first time ever. So Kenny Guyton, you know, he's on deck. We want him to run with what he's comfortable with. That's kind of what I wanted to hear. I, I didn't expect him to do a full reverse like oh no we're just going to go in all all hands on all hands on on deck and 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 we're going to run the we're going to run the the veer and shoot we're going to wipe out everything i mean that would be really hard to do to just go in and do a complete reinstall of an offense yeah kj's run before some of those guys have run uh, some of those guys on the offensive line have run the offense but then you've got a whole bunch of other guys skill position guys tight ends wide receivers that have never run the veer and shoot at least not the not the veer and shoot not the way in which you know, maybe that they would want to run it, assuming they're they're trying to stem from what uh, Kendall did here. I I don't know. I'm not a I'm not a coordinator. I'm not a coach. I have no idea. But that seems like a very large undertaking. So it makes sense to be like, well, okay, maybe we're going to try and implement a little bit of what we've done this year. We're going to simplify that, and we're going to see if we can run a little bit. You know, we're going to run. We, we want to move the pocket more. And we want to we want to implement more RPO, and we want to get them moving more. We want KJ out of the pocket more. That thing I told you earlier about how much we practice it, but never did it on the field. We're actually going to do that now. We're going to move the pocket, and then we're going to implement fast up tempo. This is the changes that we're going to make, and uh, this is what we're going to ask Guyton to do, and we're going to let him call those plays. So I, maybe that's what they're going to do. Maybe that is the plan all along, and and that was a little bit of. Uh, Sam just being clever. I don't know. Brian Fraser says he was saying volume was was too much, but uh, but how? And it was the same plays. Well, I, I mean, I know they run. Listen, you could run how many plays out of the pistol. I mean, you could run. There's all kinds of different things you can do out of the pistol. There's all kinds of different things you can do with the three wide sets, four wide sets, two tight end, jumbo, whatever you want to do. You could run all kinds of plays. Maybe that's what he meant. I don't know, Brian. You're asking the wrong guy. I don't know. Um, I, I, it'd be nice for him to clarify on that a little bit, a little vague, put Criswell in, uh, it's, it's, it's going to get worse and I will not eat my words. And I know my family's on the Hill. Yeah. I just, I don't see them doing that. The only way I see Criswell playing is if they're getting blown out. I mean, that's, that's the only way I see it happening. JV's hangout says Sam hinted that the offense, that the offense, might have focused too much on playbook and not fundamentals. Yeah, he did. You were right. I would love for him to to elaborate. Yeah, you're you're. I can only tell you, you know, my interpretation of what I thought he meant. I don't. I don't know. You got to think for pass plays. It's it's uh, exponential. Obviously, there's a set number of run plays that are possible. Here's also something else. He wants to throw the ball. Now, there, there's a rumor. I don't know if this is true. 
this was something I was told yesterday in a group chat. He did actually go to Jimmy Smith. But that Jimmy wasn't interested in calling plays. Now, I don't know where that's coming from. I have no idea if there's truth in that. But it sounds to me like they wanted to throw they want to throw the ball. They want to open the offense up a little bit more, but they don't want to do it dropping back, you know, just sitting in the pocket 20 something times a game. I mean, like Sam said today, that should be more like 8 or 10 times. Now, again, who knows what exactly he wants to replace that with, but it sounds to me like he maybe went this route because he he I think they want to throw the ball a little bit a little bit more and so we'll have to see they can't run hell they can't do anything Dan they can't run they can't throw. Uh, well, thanks, Ty. I spent. I can't read your whole message. That emoji's in the way. Hang on. I'll have to wait till some more comments. See, I don't have the option YouTube to even remove this. Like, here we go. Well, thanks, Ty. I spent ten dollars for a lollipop. You can't expect me to have all the answers, bro. I mean, come on. Ty, if we win five or six games without without Enos, would it be Enos's fault for us being something? Can't read your comment. I mean, this emoji literally takes up half, almost a quarter of your damn paragraph. It, it's so annoying. I, and I can't remove it. I, can't, I bitch about it every show. There we go. Okay, uh... Ty, if we win five or six games without Enos, would it be Enos's fault for us being so bad on Ottawa? Well, yeah, I mean, that would be the assumption, right? <laughs> I'll bust up an odd soul and tell them Ty sent me. <laughs> Hopefully I don't get thrown out. They won't throw you out. Uh, emoji sucks on YouTube. Well, they put it on my screen right where you guys chat, and I can't read your damn sentence, so I have to wait until chat starts to kind of go a little bit and then your your comment moves up and then I can read the whole thing. I mean, it takes up it takes up like a good portion, at least like 3 2 3 words. Yeah, you're right, James. They do suck on on YouTube. Uh try Criswell and things of that nature says says Dan. Yeah, again, I guys Listen, I God bless you, okay? You you guys want Criswell, I maybe you'll get him, okay? Maybe you'll get him. I just don't know that that's going to be the answer. And now you got a guy, it sounds like they want to do the things. Sounds like they want to get more, maybe a little bit closer to what Kendall did, right? Well, that's going to be right in KJ's wheelhouse, if that's going to be the case. So now Criswell's likelihood of playing is going down a little bit further. I mean, maybe Criswell can operate the veer and shoot. Maybe he can operate that kind of offense. You know what we didn't do? We didn't talk about Mississippi State. I really didn't want to. I mean, but I will say this. I mean, we everything that's been said... There's not really any point going back over it, really. But I'll say this much. Uh, three points. Man, I, I think you guys you guys could have drawn up some plays and, and gotten a touchdown. You guys are the experts, right? I mean, some of you. So I, I, I fully believe some of you could absolutely go out there. And I'm not being a smartass. I'm being legit. I think you could go out there and draw up some plays and get, a, get in the end zone at least once against Mississippi State. Mississippi State is walking garbage. They're horrible. Their pass defense is atrocious. They're not great at getting after the quarterback. They don't beat up line of scrimmage play. Now, again, to be fair, you're also dealing with a team that I think the something's going on, man. They feel broken. <laughs> it feels like you're, you know, you're you're uh you're running on a flat tire out there, maybe two, maybe all of them. Maybe you're just riding on your rims cuz you got some personnel issues. But I still think some of you guys, maybe the majority of you, could have done more than just three points. That's inexcusable, especially at home. 200 total yards of offense, 3.1 yards per pass, 2.8 yards per rush, abysmal. This, this, again, was the right move to get it. We can all agree on that. We may not agree on the Criswell stuff, and again, I think Criswell could be – I think he's going to be a good player. I, I, I believe – I think he's got potential. I really do. I, I just don't know that this year it's, it's his time to, to, to do – I don't know that he could do anything. I'd be concerned about hurting the guy's confidence. This offensive line has just not done their job. But despite everything, I think we can all agree that what happened yesterday or what happened Saturday and then what ended up happening yesterday was the right thing. Five of 17 on third down. 
Mississippi State was one of ten. You've got this defense, special teams. It was all wasted. It was all wasted, every bit of it. And it, it is really unfortunate. Uh, KJ is too comfortable. He needs to be brought back down to earth. Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> I was just wondering, again, I can't read that whole comment. I was just wondering, I don't think so either, but I've I've seen some Hog fans think so on Twitter. What are you talking about? Oh, hold on. Oh, do you think we should be favored versus Purdue? I would say, I don't know. I mean, what I, what I know about Purdue, they got a certain seven-footer that's really damn good. They're good, man. I mean, Purdue, and I haven't really began my – up-to-date research on them yet. Just kind of light note-taking here and there. Purdue is Purdue's going to be good. I, I don't know how far, but I, they look to me like a team that could easily go on a Sweet 16, Elite 8 kind of run. Um, they're good. I, I don't know. And it is, an, it is an exhibition. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, Musselman doesn't take any game off. We all know that. But uh, it, it's, it's going to be – that's, that's going to be interesting to see what they do with the rotation, who's starting and everything. I'm so excited for Saturday. I'm so excited! Again, I'm going to be with the Don't Read the Comments podcast on Saturday. We're going to be doing a uh, side-by-side watch of the game. You're going to mute the game, but you're going to be in sync with us, and we're going to, I don't know, man, we're going to call the game in a way. We're going to talk about it. We're going to have fun. We had a blast last time we did this, so we're going to do it again on Saturday. Really looking forward to it. Uh, all right, next up. Me and Steven Hammer from QB Spotlight, we're going to talk a little bit about just his thoughts on the whole Dan Enos, on all that stuff. Uh, if you're a Patreon supporter, be there. It'll be uh, only, again, only available. I'll have to send you guys a link. But, if again, if you're a Patreon supporter, I'll get that set up. It might take me a few minutes, give me a little bit of time. But, uh, again, if you're a Patreon supporter, you will have access to this. Even if you're not there live, it'll be up. Uh, but I, if you got any questions for him, you're going to want to be there live. So here's the boom. There's the pace for you. Do you think Hunter Yurchek was involved in the decision? I think Hunter Yurchek basically told Sam, uh, now, now and possibly you in November, both of you. Now. I, I want to say yes. I do think Hunter was involved. I don't know that, but I do think Hunter was involved. Absolutely. I don't know if he told him he had to fire him. I don't know if that was the case or if he just kind of said, listen, you know, we, we gotta, you know, we might need to make a move here. I don't know, Sam. I, I don't know how that went down. I don't know how Sam, I don't know how he goes about those sort of things, but you know, if he, if he applies pressure or not, maybe he did. I feel like he probably did. I feel like he was a part of it. Sam did say we made the decision. Well, I think he was saying that kind of like as a team. Is that what was was that his words? Did he say we? I think the first thing uh, your questions would be on Danny Enos. The first thing I want to say is Dan worked extremely hard. He was building. Uh, did he say we? That is interesting. That might be a little bit of a tell if he did. Um, uh, we've got to do something differently. And one of them is to cut down on volume. So I've been meeting with those guys, blah, 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 blah. May have to, I'm going to have to take another good gander at this transcript, but I, at the end of the day, he could have also just been saying that like we as a team, like he, you know, I don't know. I don't know. All right. That is it. I will, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to get Steven Hamner on here. We're going to be live. You're not going to want to miss it. I, again, I I don't know all of his thoughts on 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 all this. I'm very curious to see what he has to say. So, Patreon supporters, I'll see you over there. Shout out to all the sponsors: Direct Service Overhead, the Garage Door Company, and the Odd Soul Craft Bar and Pizzeria located in Springdale on Emma Street. Uh, I will see you guys, Patreon supporters. I'll see you over there. Everybody else, I don't plan on doing a live until Friday. I'm gonna try and take this week a little easy. I've been I've been uh, I've been going at it 100 miles an hour, going back to Friday. I'm gonna take some time. I don't know if there will be there might be some content uploaded. I don't know, maybe maybe not. But Friday I will be back and we're gonna break down Purdue and uh, kind of go from there. All right, okay.
I'll see you guys. I'll see Patreon supporters in Patreon over there here on YouTube here just a little bit. All right. Okay. I'll see you guys.